Welcome to Glow Your Own Five. Uh, today we're going to be doing some creative activity and that will lead up to the Oxford Christmas Light Festival that starts on Friday the 19th of November where CJ will be using some of the technology and creative ideas that we've been working on in Glow Your Own to put together a massive lantern on the side of the CDI building in Blackbird Lees. So please do come and have a look at that or at least check out the Instagram and Twitter and Facebook feeds and you'll see what CJ has been up to. But with that, I will get on to sorting out people's nicknames and I will pass on, I think, to CJ, first of all. Yep. Great okay. stuff. Hey, everybody. Um, we're going to do two things today. Hopefully get it all finished. The first thing is that we're going to um, lengthen, do some wire lengthening. So this means that we can have um, our LEDs in away from us so we can use them a bit more remotely and then just being in the breadboard so if you've got your materials ready now or you can just simply watch and then um, do it at a later date but i've got the the wires that dane sent in the post that's the purple uh, very bendy bendy wires i'm going to pop this down because it's pretty clear if you see down on this whiteboard here so these are the two uh well two for now wires um i've cut them in half so basically we need to take take these for our first led we're going to cut them to about say well however do 15 centimeters 15 or 20 centimeters long so cut one piece to 15 or 20 centimeters and then another piece as well so we'll have two of exactly the same length <coughs> So when we've got our, sorry, Dane. I was just going to say, just to jump in. So CJ is now um, working on the uh, the crafting part. So if you want to just watch and see what they're doing, that's great. Um, if you do happen to have your uh, LED breadboard and bits and pieces, and you do have the wires that arrived in the post, you could do it in real time. But it might also just be equally as fun to just watch and see what happens uh, and we might get to some coding afterwards but today is just to do some crafting or get some crafting inspiration from cj just wanted to kind of clarify that okay Sorry, thank CJ. You. That's okay thank you okay so we've got our two pieces um cut to 15 or 20 centimeters and then for the bit we need to now expose the the wire inside so to do that be very careful uh, with scissors and obviously um have supervision if that's necessary and we're going to basically shave off the plastic so we need to apply enough pressure um onto the wire so that so that we are able to cut the wire but uh, the cut the plastic but we, we want to not cut the wire so you have to kind of just trial and error really to see how much pressure you need to apply um so i'm just going to do a little de demo now there, I've shaved it off and that's worked well for me, luckily the first time round, but that's not always the case. Many times I've cut through the wire as well. So that's something that will happen every now and again, but then it's just get, getting used to the knowing the right pressure, how much to apply on your scissors um, to, to get that kind of just the wire exposed. We're gonna do that on both ends of the cut pieces. So, Let's hope for the best again. Okay, just about. Okay, nice. So I've managed to luckily do it again. So now I've got two ends exposed. Um, in terms of how long you need to, how long the wire needs to be exposed at the end, I'd say a couple of centimeters. Um, would, would be would be ideal there two centimeters no more than that because if it's if it's quite long um it's a bit difficult to fit into the breadboard however the other end could be slightly longer because this is the one we're attaching to our led and in fact i'm going to make mine a little bit longer so one end could be much longer than the other end so we could work with maybe three or four centimeters on the other end because that way we've got a nice amount to wrap around one leg of the LED. Okay, so we're going to do exactly the same on the other wire. So 
So I'll have quite a long, oopsie, I've cut that one. Let's try again. I want quite a long one again on one end. <coughs> And then I'll do a slightly shorter centimeter or so shorter on the other end. Okay. So I've now got two wires with both ends wires um, poking out. On one, on one of the ends, it's quite short, but maybe two centimeters or a centimeter and a half. And on the other end, it can be so there's three to five, however, however long, really. Um, don't go above five centimeters, I'd say. <coughs> Hope that's, can you see that? Yeah, okay. So now the a really fiddly bit is attaching um, our LEDs to these wires. So if you've got the conductive tape, either this one that was, think was sent in in the pack or um electrical tape if if anybody has that but this should have been sent so we need this to be conductive so we, we're connecting because we're connecting up the leds we need the electricity to run through it all constantly so i'm gonna attach um one of the legs of the leds to one end of the wires and sometimes it's nice to kind of just mark on the leg that you're the longer leg so the positive leg, leg just to make a mark so when you're plugging it into the breadboard you, you know which one is which so positive and I put a mark on the the wire with the long leg that I'm attaching and if not you can always just switch it around do that whole um trial and error thing so it's not the end of the world if you don't get a mark on there so now I'm gonna get the tape <laughs> and attach the long leg um, of the LED to the long bit um, end of the wire that we cut. And what is a nice way to fix it, to keep it nice and secure is maybe wrap the wire around the leg so it's not gonna uh, disconnect later on. So we've got that. And then I'm going to just tape it over with this conductive tape. And hopefully that is secure enough. So I've got one leg now attached to one end of the wire. Remember the end that this is longest. And I'm going to get again the other wire that we cut and get the longest end and to put attach that to the other leg of the LED. So get my conductive tape ready. Gonna fold this around again. So it's, I basically coiled the, the wire around the leg of the LED. So it's sort of in place. And then I'm gonna double it up and stick this conductive tape around it very fiddly okay so we have now one completed led so it's long now quite a long one that we should make it a lot easier when we want to fit it in our little art projects. And we do exactly the same for another LED. And luckily to speed up this, I've managed to kind of shave down the wires already. Um, it's nice, just do it one more time. I'll just fix these up so I'm taking the wire again wrapping it around one leg of the LED oops it's one more
So I'm sticking the one leg on the wire and then going to go again with another piece of wire. Goodness me. This is really testing off fine motor skills. <laughs> Okay, great. It's okay, now I have two long tentacles on my LEDs. Right, great. So that's what they should look like and when they're done. And it should be quite secure. Check that if you give a little tiny, tiny tug, but not much, that they are in place there. Because if, if not, they won't, they won't light up because there won't be any electricity running through it. They need to be quite secure on there. Great, so this then would take us, if everybody wants a minute or two, I don't know, Dane. I'm totally okay, I'm just catching up. Um, so yeah. I think some people, some people have got the wires, which is great. And if you have the wires and you're participating in this as CJ's doing it, that's fun. Uh, if you don't yet have the wires, you can just sit back and watch. Um, and I'm gonna be doing it too, so you can see my, um, amateur version of what we're doing uh, but CJ has produced or is going to produce something really cool so um, I hope everyone's having fun I've just also put the link if you haven't had wires sent out to you um, in the emails that I've been sending out um, I've been sending a link to getting your Arduino so if you don't have an Arduino yet that's fine if you've just been playing um, on Tinkercad but you can also play in real life uh, if you want to get an Arduino, the instructions are in the link that I've just put in the chat box. And if you already have an Arduino or if you want to just buy your own from somewhere like Amazon, that's cool. We've got some of these little wires. You can not You can just about see that in front of my face. So I've got little wires there. Um, and they're, they're, that's all we're sending out. Um, we aren't sending out the conductive tape um, because that's not really needed to lengthen the wires. It's just something that CJ has in. Uh, from another project and it just makes them extra conductive so sometimes what we do find is that if you don't tape or wind your wires around your led legs effectively enough sometimes the connection goes and that causes us a trouble problem uh, which we might have to troubleshoot later but um yeah you can just use regular regular sellotape that's what i'm going to use anyway but they look great cj what's next great thanks dane okay so now we're going to do a little, just a couple of demos um, using fine lying around or if you, if at any point you want to kind of uh, get uh, some materials. I've bought this phone, this board is really nice to work on with LEDs. It's called Fomex. Um, maybe one day in the future, if you did, it's just really nice to, because it's quite uh, spongy and you can pierce things through. So if you wanted to put LEDs through it, um, it very easily is 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 workable with like making holes and things um but other than that you can also use corrugated cardboard so something like this um that's that's got multi a couple of layers there so again it's nice to pierce your hole through it um and that way you can put a push the led lights through um, if you need to, or use this as a base for anything else that you might stick stick on in. Uh, so I'll show you an example of something that I've got. Um, I've used the foam board, but again, the corrugated is good. I've just used this because I've got this left over from a project that I'm doing, um, which is the project that Dane has just been explaining. <laughs> The, LED, the Christmas Lights Festival. So I've got some nice reusing the uh, off cuts of that. So I'm going to make like a little um, starry uh, star night sky, basically glow in the dark stars and that so sort of seem to be floating. So I've got, I'm using this um, sort of semi-transparent foam and I've drawn little stars and cut them out. You can also use materials such as that of mushroom boxes 
something that's sort of semi-transparent or or fully transparent it is nice to have it slightly sort of a mixture between opaque and transparent because that the way the diffusion uh, of the light of the led is, is is much nicer than if it's just uh, completely transparent that's why i've used these materials it's nice to have a play with all sorts of different materials you've got in your house as well to do your own kind of experimentation that's what i've been doing in the last week so i'll draw a star out of this so the one that i made earlier i'm just gonna get Okay, so I'm just going to draw around it. So any star sh sort of shape you want. Okay, so that's my little template. I'm going to cut the star out now. We have a question in the chat box that I've just spotted. So someone's asking how long are the wires? So um, I've taken I've taken one bundle. So that's one of the bundles that were sent out in the post, or you'll get them in the next day or so. And so what I've done is I've cut that into four lengths, and the lengths are about half a meter long. So uh, this one is white and the bundle is black, as you can see. And I've just taken off, you won't be able to see this because they're too fine, but I've just taken off the ends of the wire um, so the metal's exposed. And I've done that onto four of them. And I've got two LEDs that I've just taken out of my breadboard and I'm a bit behind on CJ. So I'm just wrapping my wire around the long and the short leg of my LED and I'm just about to tape it in place with regular sellotape. Um, so about half a metre should be okay. And then you've got two because you've got two bundles of wire you can have four leds that are on half meter long wires if that's all right so back to you cj How's next? Hello, okay. so i've managed to put out one of the stars and i've got a few that i did make earlier so i've used this was out of the mushroom box and then these are out of this foam that is semi see-through um <clears throat> the stuff that you get inside packaging usually if you get any parcels um it comes inside of that so it's nice to use all the materials available so that we don't have to buy too much and we're not wasting too much so mm -hmm. these i've got a few here i've got I've made four stars and then now i'm gonna make um make the little starscape that I was explaining like a very mini uh, very mini planetarium, like floating. Okay, so I've got little sticks from incense, like leftover incense sticks, the ends, but you can use toothpicks or cocktail sticks. Um, ideally, something that's not a, uh, quite a dark colour like this, like pink, for example, because you want to have the effect that they are floating. So something a bit more lighter. I know um, Dane's got some cocktail sticks, which is a good, a good colour kind of a light brown, but these are the ones I'm using for now. And I'm gonna poke the head through, uh, star through the top of it. And the other end is gonna go into my foam board. And as you can see, it's pierced in nicely and it's quite a good structure. This will also be the same on the cardboard. It'll have a similar effect if the cardboard is quite thick. So poking another one. Okay. So this now let's sort of see. That's just um, using basic materials, that's without the light. So you obviously you can't really see much, but when the light, when we've got the, the LEDs in there, then you should see some 
hopefully some shadows being started to create and some colors. So I'm gonna uh, power up the LEDs now. Just bear with me because I need to make sure that all the connections, so I'll just go ahead and do that now. Just an update on, on attaching wires to the LEDs. What I found, I've actually found that the sellotape is a bit <laughs> tricky to use. So what I've actually done is I have wound the exposed metal bit round the LED leg, and then I've gone back on myself winding round the bit of the wire that still has the plastic insulation coating on it just to secure it in place. And I'm hoping that that will be enough to hold it in place rather than frankly faffing around with sellotape that isn't sticking very well. <laughs> so you might, you might, again, this is all about being creative. So if you find a new way of doing it, uh, that's really cool. And that's what, you know, that's what research is like. So you'll find when Sophie and Laura are playing around with their much bigger kind of electronics components and things, Sometimes it will work, as you know, with the Arduino coding, and sometimes it just won't work. And so we need to find a little solution that is um, in keeping with what we have and also does what we want it to achieve. So part of this is being creative in all sorts of different ways. So uh, if you don't feel like you're creative, it's about just solving problems, really. Uh, so engineers are creative, artists are creative, um, and uh, hopefully you can be creative with your LEDs too. Scientists. So it's like a massive, it's like a massive swing shot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've managed to get my LEDs working and will now, fortunately, I want to turn all that, all the lights off in a minute so you get the maximum effect. And also what we found when you're putting, because this wire, this extension wire is quite thin. One of the things that is quite useful to do is to fold it over. Um, so on the end that's not attached to an LED, because you've got to then eventually poke that uh, into the LED, it's into the breadboard, sorry. Uh, you might want to fold it over and sort of twist it a bit to make it a bit thicker. And then if you can, you might even want to fold it over a second time to make it four times as, or as many times as you can possibly do it. Um, it's, it's, fiddle, it's easier to say than it is to do. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay, just poke them in, should be. Right, okay, so I have some glowing stars. Wow. Wait, that's very intense brightness. And why is that? Because the green one is not on. Um, this always happens <laughs> in the moment of truth. Mm -hmm. just... It's usually those last minute things, isn't it? Yeah, it's just fiddly because the wires keep coming out. Encourage it a little bit more just to go in the right okay. bit. Okay, so our green is now in there, so it sort of diffuses against, can you see that? Is that very too, really bright? That's cool. Hold it back a bit, see if it seems to be glaring a bit. Oh, well, I'm very happy. I put my first LED in and the LEDs are in the right way around. <laughs> Yay! So don't forget, if it doesn't work first time, what do we always do? Just 
switch the LED light the other way around. <laughs> exactly. So we've got definitely a little glow in the dark stars here. Just about focused. Okay. That's good. That's good. Hopefully you've managed to see enough. That, and then obviously you'll be able to see it in your own um, workshop if you're doing that, what it looks like. But obviously with the camera, it's quite a, a glare on there, but you can see what's going on there. You, you can see there's glowing yeah, stars. Really good. <laughs> we've, had, we've, okay. had some, we've had some little comments in the chats. We've got people going, looks really cool. Um, there's thumbs up. There's, uh, we know that it's difficult to take pictures off, but it looks really good. And it, when you're making your own, when you eventually get round to making your own and lengthening your wires, you can see um, you can see it for yourself. Lovely, yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so I'm going to do one more demo for you, just to give you a little bit more any ideas that you can take um, and do what you want with them, change them, or do exactly the same. I'll um, just put the light on again, so it's brighter. Okay, and this one is my bioluminescence jellyfish. Uh, so basically bioluminescence is just what happens in some living organisms. Um, lots of them are in the sea, for example, some jellyfishes. It's the light that produ is produced when there's a chemical um, reaction inside. And I'm gonna kind of try and replicate that um, using the LED. So for that, I've got, uh, I've cut the, the ends of um, bottle tops, the bottle, bottles basically I've just cut through them using scissors, just be very careful um, and do it su with supervision just because it can be quite fiddly. But it's just Coke bottles or um, any kind of juice bottles and just cut the ends off. Got one here and what I'll do on here, I'm gonna decorate it a little bit just to give it a little bit of life. Um, so the jellyfish vine. So I've got two uh, Posca pens, marker pens. Good. And I'm just going to put a few little um, fun patterns on them. Just to make them more magical. Um, We can decorate our things however we want, really. I'm just using just a few little patterns. Okay. Well, they did another, so I've done one here, just decorate with a few dots and dashes. If it's really simple, but it looks quite cute. And then I've got another one that I did, which is slightly smaller. And this has different shapes on the bottle end. So it's uh, even more of an interesting interesting shape and maybe a little bit more jellyfish like because it has got those shapes um, already inbuilt there. Okay so now and then I have put pieces of inside of um, crisp packets and these are going to be the dangly tentacles that will come out and it's nice to use this because it's quite reflective so it will also be nice when the light hits it as you can see it's already having a sort of shimmery effect so Material like that, reflective, could be foil as well. Um, and I've also done a few plastic paper bags, um, just tentacles, for the tentacles. So I'll just get four for now. And I'm gonna stick them to the inside of my plastic bottle top. I'll just put that down a little bit. Yeah, this is the fiddly bit. Got one. Another leg in there. Got two, two dangly legs there sort of see it 
And then I'm going to get two more. Meanwhile, an update from over here. I've got both of the LEDs working now. Yay! <laughs> so the second one, I did exactly that thing, and the LEDs, the wire, the long wires ended up going in the wrong holes, so it wasn't working. So I had to pull them out, and then the the end of the wire then broke, so I had to take a bit more of. So you'll find all sorts of little um, problems that kind of occur. So you might have to take the wire um, casing off a few times for it to work. But um, again, perseverance is the watchword, I think. And trial and error. Um, and trial and error, absolutely. Oh, look, it's gone off now, so something's fallen. Um, anyway, back to you, CJ. How are you getting on with yours? I'm already done. Okay, I've, I've just about put the legs in. Um, let me just hold it up, not super clear. Um, that's part of my little jellyfish. I've just attached the legs underneath. Um, and then I'm going to put the light into it now. So I'm going to change my colours though <laughs> to pink and blue, I think. Just gotta get those. Just going to switch up my LEDs. Yeah, and it's nice as well to think about the different colours of LEDs that you can use for different um, different designs. So for the lights, I use the green and the white because it's kind of like the glow in the dark stars. And then this one I'm using pink and blue because it's more appropriate for a uh, jellyfish. Okay, let's get the... Just powering up my LEDs, just take a moment. It's very fiddly. Okay, that happened to be the right. And I'm gonna turn this light off. Okay, so there's a pink and a blue light in there. It looks like a lantern. There you go. Floating jellyfish. Right, let me just. Uh, oh, great. You can see the tentacles below. Yeah, the reflecting. That's why it's nice to choose like your materials wisely. Have a play. It's really fun to experiment with all different types of materials. Opaque, transparent, reflective. Um, to see what you can find in your rubbish bin <laughs> or recycling bin. Yeah, that's cool, okay. I'll just... Uh... Turn the light back on. Well, you can also see it with the light on. Yeah, and it's, the, again, the ridges of the, the plastic top make the kind of form of the jellyfish, which is quite cool. It's coming, it's coming. Oh, it's coming apart as well. <laughs> Put my little creature to the 
I'm working. This is easy. So let's see if this works actually. This is um, also a fun thing to play with. If you just poke a load of holes into either a cardboard or a um, bit of foam board, and then you shine the light behind it, that's another way that you can, inspiration for some crafts um, to make like a little night sky. Um, it's just come out of the, I've lost, I've lost my lighting. Yeah. So there's endless things that you can do. It's like really simple. Um, and then you can just keep going and just keep seeing what you come up with. Oh, wow, that's nice. So it's quite quick that's, to make. I mean, it's not. That's lovely, Jane. So you can obviously put as many of these on as you wanted if you were making one. And that's you, beautiful. Is, just, is that a purple LED? So that's how it's set up. Um, so I haven't really put much thought into the color of um, my LEDs, but that's what we've got so far. Right. That's I, might nice. build, I might build on that later. Mm -hmm. Bring it to the festival on Friday. <laughs> Absolutely. So I mean, maybe CJ. So we could we could talk very briefly about what we are doing on this um, Friday the nineteenth, and then if we do have a bit of time, we might do a little bit of coding um, because we've got about twenty minutes left, um, and so that's some crafting ideas. Um, that we've kind of explored so two really nice ideas from cj one of them i've just made in sort of 20 minutes or so um and it, it could be more beautiful um and and then there was the other um bioluminescence example using the jellyfish there with the tentacles and how it was moving and obviously it was it was not attached to the breadboard so that's the key thing is to kind of mm. liberate your LEDs from the breadboards with these extension wires that you can just get. You can get them as long as you like. Um, it's called a wrapping wire. Um, and I don't quite know what they're designed to wrap, possibly electronic components like we're doing. Uh, so CJ, would you like to say anything about the installation on the Blackbird Leaves Community Centre on the 19th of November? Yep, so we are um, doing the first switch on on the, on the evening, so when it gets dark, and I've created a basically a very life-size and bigger circuit board um, with all the, uh, the lights will be running through it, and then we're going to have um, a panel on our phone, so it'll be, you can, you'll be able to log on to your phone and there'll be an app that you can um, download and it will be attached to a QR code. So when you press um, certain pixels on your phone, it'll light up um, elements of the, the light installation. And I will, it's a surprise what's gonna be lit up. So I'll leave, leave the surprise, but there'll be two different um, images that will light up um, and you get to control that. Um, so the night sky is controlling the, uh, our ability to see the lights, and then you get to control um, these individual features um, as well. Great. So, and it's just the same technology. That's the amazing thing. It's just the same technology that we're using here. So, you know, you can put two stars in a little bit of corrugated card from a box that you possibly had delivered from some online shopping and a bit of old plastic that you put in your recycling box. So maybe raid your recycling box with some stuff uh, and you can build something and if you wanted to bring it or if you wanted to take photographs of it we'd really love we'd just love seeing what you're making so sometimes people have sent through photos from last year's play your own project where we made lanterns and put them on windowsills if you want to do that too that would be great and uh and if you if you send us some photos we could put them on the social media and we can get more people to kind of see what we've been doing together over the past well it will be six weeks um 
next week. So uh, please do share. That's what I'm saying. Anyway, unless CJ, you have anything more to add, we could um, squeeze in a little bit of coding. Yeah, definitely. It's always good with some coding in. How do you fancy, Sophie? Do you reckon we've got time? I reckon we've can, we've got time to do a little uh, a little bit. Awesome. Uh, because I mean, they are pretty good. Uh, this this group, they seem to be pretty quick at things. So I reckon that we can. We can do a little bit. Uh, okay. if we want. That was amazing, CJ. I love that bioluminescent jellyfish so, so much. I want one to like hang from my ceiling just in general in life. Um, might have to get you to make me one. Um, I'll post you one, Sophie. Yay! That would be amazing, honestly. It's so, so cool. <laughs> it's so cool. I want to name it, though, as well. I think it deserves a name because it's, it's, it's so pretty. Like Violet. I think it looks like it's a nice Violet name. Uh, but anyway, so CJ has shown us this amazing, um, uh, the amazing things that we can do with our, um, with our LEDs and with our art. Uh, and like Dame was saying, this fantastic stuff that's going to be up on the Blackbird Lees uh, Community Centre next week. Um, it's all using the same coding, the same things that we've been doing for the past few weeks together which is again the same coding uh, that happens at the lab with Laura, where Laura and I work we have um we have Arduinos and we have circuits that do exactly the same things that you uh, have been doing so these are really good um good skills to be creative with all right so I'm going to quickly share my screen if you all want to log on to Tinkercad um we're going to look at the circuit um that we um you all see that? Yeah. We're going to use a very similar circuit to the circuit that we were using last week. Um, so the only difference is, and you don't have to do this, is I've added two extra um, LEDs. So before we had two LEDs and there, were com uh, and there was a photoresistor, which you'll remember is a sensor that detects how light it is um, outside. And I thought what would be nice, CJ showing us how to make it look beautiful, but wouldn't it be, think how even more beautiful we could make it if we had the LEDs flashing in different patterns um, as well during the, uh, as the jellyfish bobbed past us. Um, and, uh, or as, our, as Dane's beautiful star and moon twinkled and flashed on and off. So we can use coding to help us um, to help us do that. So at the moment, um, I just have, um, uh, I've just got all of my, all of my LEDs just to turn on. So you'll see that I started my simulation and they all just turned on, okay? But we could change that into any kind of different pattern that we wanted. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna use um, something that's really, really useful in coding and that is called variables. Now, um, Laura and Sarah and CJ, they'll tell you that they use variables all the time in their coding. Variables all the time, all the time yes. Uh, variables are really, really useful uh, because they're just a way of getting your computer or your Arduino to remember something for you. And if you're as bad at remembering things as I am, that's really helpful uh, a lot of the time. So it's just saying, computer, remember what the light level was, um, or computer, remember um, what this sum is, uh, or computer, remember what this is. And so in Tinkercad, um, we're going to create a variable, something for the computer to remember, or Arduino to remember, um, that is the light level, okay? The, the light that the sensor is reading. So to do that, that's really easy. You just click here on variables. Uh, and then at the moment, the only thing that we can do is create a variable. Um, so we're going to click create a variable. And then Tinkercad comes up with a little box. Can I just check that you can see the little box that's come up? Yep, fab. Now, we can name our variable anything that we want to name it. Um, you can name it Bob if you wanted, but that's not very sensible. Um, it's OK if you've just got one variable. But in the code that Laura works on and that our scientists work on, there isn't just one variable. There are literally hundreds of variables. 
So it's a good idea to name it something that is uh, going to remind you what that variable means. So we're going to call our variable light. So you just type in light and you click OK like this. And then you come up with some other options. So you can set the value for light, really helpful. You can get it to change the value of your variable light by a number. And then you can use your number light um, to do whatever you like. So we are going to set our variable light in our repeat loop. And we're gonna set it to the value of our photoresistor, so our light level. Um, and you'll remember from last time that you can get what this value is um, from looking uh, in this section, this input section, and reading your analog pin. So just click it in like that. So now it says read analog pin A0. And if you look at my circuit here, you'll see that that's not going to be a very interesting number because it's not connect nothing's connected to A0. So it's just going to be a really boring number. So we have to make sure that it's connected to the right one. So I'm going to say A1. OK, how's everybody doing? Have, has everyone got a lovely variable called light or something like light, something to remind you? Um, make a reaction uh, or something if you have a nice variable there. Yep, fantastic. Palm's got a variable. Um, brilliant. You can raise your hand um, or thumbs up. Thank you, Rahul. Rahul. Uh, to show that you are there with me. Okay. And then we're just gonna use the same if that we did before. So we're going to do different patterns depending on our light level. Uh, but instead of reading it in straight, we're gonna use this variable light. So I'm gonna click on control um, and I'm going to click this if then else, remember asking the Arduino a question. Now you might, if you're using the same code as you were using last time, you might already have that, um, uh, have one of these bits, which is absolutely fine. You can just uh, change it. Um, you can just change what we put in here. So I'm gonna say if the light level is higher than a certain value. Uh, and so we're gonna use math. Use I don't like saying math, we should, we should say maths. Um, and if my light level here, so I've got this is greater than or less than, then I can go to variables to find out what light is. Click on this. If light is less than, let's say 400, then we want all of our lights to turn on. And otherwise, we're gonna get all of our lights to turn off. Now, does anyone remember how we copy a whole set of code? Um, I think, have we done this? Have we done this before copying a bit of code? So have a think if you can remember how we'd copy all of these blocks at once and you can pop it in the chat or you can just do it um, if you can remember. Fantastic, thank you very much, Isabel. Um, we just duplicate. So if you go up to the top one, you right click, Sorry, left and right are really hard. And then it comes up with duplicate or delete block. Don't click delete block because that's not going to be helpful. Um, I definitely have never ever done that, obviously. Um, that's a lie. I have all the time. So you click duplicate and then you get all of that. You pop it down in our second if block. Then we're going to change it, change all of them to low. Okay. And now we've got this big thing uh, here. Uh, we, we, re, we set our variable light to this pin number. Uh, and then if it's dark, then we turn our lights on. If it's light, we turn them off. Then we're gonna wait for a second and do it all again. So if, anyone's, if everyone's ready, let's simulate our circuit and click start, thinking about it. All right, so you'll remember if you click on your light sensor, you can change the light level. At the moment, it thinks it's really dark. So all of my lights are on. 
But if I move it up to about here, all of my lights turn off. And you can see I've got my serial monitor going down here at the bottom so I can tell what light level um, uh, the serial monitor is reading. So we've just used our variable to do that. And that's very nice and very pretty. But um, I think it would be nice to make a pattern, a flashing light, don't you? Um, so shall we, you can pick your own pattern. Um, so I'm going to say, um, uh, it's, I'm going to add another thing, another if uh, loop in here. Uh, and to have so three different things. So you click on control and then do if then else as well and pop it in this else button. Oh, might take you a minute to get to the right place like me because I can't do it at the moment. Oh, and then look what's happened. Everything's gone in the wrong place. Don't worry if that happens, you can just rearrange. So you want another if then else that is in the middle in your second else loop, else block rather, sorry. Okay, did everyone get that? Sorry, it did, um, it popped out in the wrong place and so it might have looked a bit confusing to you all. If you'd like me to do it again, pop something in the chat. Um, Sophie, please can you scroll up a little bit? Because um, we had a question, someone had an error message that said um, light was not declared. Um, so it's this bit at the top that says set light to the analog pin that you need at the top. That's a really important one. Thank you, Laura. Because the Arduino won't know unless you tell it what to remember for light. Okay, so here we're gonna do one more um, maths block, so just like before, but instead of being, uh, so it will only do this if light is more than 400. So why don't we say if light, and again, you can get your light from variable. If light is less than say 600, that instead of having all of them off, I'm gonna have some of them on and some of them off. And you can pick your own pattern of which lights you want to be on and which lights you want to be off. Okay, and we've got our final bit in here. I'm duplicating again, popping it in the else thing, and they're all gonna be low. Okay. So now we've got three different patterns that we can um, that we can do. If it's really dark, all of our lights are going to be on. If it's kind of dark, some of our lights are going to be on. And then if it's quite bright, none of our lights are going to be on. Okay, and pick whichever pattern you would like. We ready to simulate? Okay. So. Starts off as being really dark, so all of our lights are on. Then we're going to turn it up, cross your fingers to make sure it happens. And now you see we're in that middle section. So my green and my red lights are on, but my yellow and white lights aren't. So that bit's working. We go up further and gets even brighter. None of my lights go on. And all of that is controlled by this light variable here. Um, and that's much easier uh, and much easier for the computer, for the Arduino, to just remember what that light variable is than to have to check every single time it goes into this, it asks this question, because it already knows the answer to that. But for our Arduino, we've only got one light sensor. And so asking one question, the Arduino can cope. But if you had lots and lots of light sensors or lots of temperature sensors or lots of other kinds of inputs, then uh, the more times you have to get it to ask the question, the slower it'll be. Because it's like, oh, this is hard work for me. So if you can just get it to remember instead, then that's going to be easier for the computer and it's going to be faster. All right. Oh, there's been a bunch of things in the chat, uh, but it looks like everybody is on it. Thank you very much, everyone. We had a nice suggestion for how you can improve your code. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> They said that you could, when you, where you have print to serial monitor, you could print light instead of printing the read analog pin. That 
is a brilliant idea. Um, I think we should do that right now. We've got one more minute. So um, again, that's easy to do. We just take this rude analog pin, put it in the rubbish bin down at the bottom. We can do that for all of them. And then we replace it with light. There we go. We'll start simulation one more time. All of them are on. And then you can see some of them are on and then none. And you could change the pattern. Um, you can change, you can make it repeat if you like, because we've done repeat. Um, uh, you can make it into all kinds of different glowing patterns. All right. And now it is six o'clock. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, uh, and thank you, CJ, because I just want to steal all of your stuff. Not steal. Um, enjoy in my house. <laughs> all right. Is that OK, Dane? That's great. Um, OK, I'll send you some. <laughs> <laughs> Really good to see more extensions of what we can do with coding. Thanks for that coding. Really nice. I'm a bit behind, so I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to stay behind to the troubleshooting to <laughs> redo my coding. Um, but and that is the time for everybody. If you want to stay behind, we're just going to do a bit of a recap and solve any um, problems that people may be having with coding, or if you've been building uh, along um, with me and CJ. If you've got any problems with your physical art piece um, or your digital art piece, your, your digital kind of code, that's it's something we can help with now. Or if you want to show us, we'd love to or see if you want to, Yeah, absolutely. If you want to show us, that would be cool. Um, but we'll see you next week for the final session where we'll be making the thing move by itself. Mm. Um, so this is very exciting using the servo motor. God, um, wait, this um, is robotic. Yeah, the start of robotics, that's absolutely right. Uh, and then, of course, we've got the Christmas light celebrations from the 19th of this, uh, November. <laughs> um, so please join us for that. Uh, thanks so much, everyone, for coming. Thanks, Laura, Sarah, Sophie and CJ. Bye. Thanks, everyone.